Reading from John chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethsaida, having five porches. In, those, in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralysed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, at a certain, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked, and that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. And he answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was who has healed me did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, marking himself, making himself equal with God. And then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he, whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honour the Son just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that his witness, which he witnesses of me, is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness of the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from men, but I say these things that you may be saved. He, who, he was the burning and shining lamp, and, he, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than John's for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me and the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form, but you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent, him you do not believe. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. 
but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive honour from men, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honour from one another and do not seek the honour that comes from the only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe in his writings, how will you believe my words? In this chapter, Jesus healed a lame man, another miracle. See, God is doing all that he can to reveal himself to us. And we have the record. The religious leaders of that time couldn't accept him as Messiah because they had power and control and influence over the people that they didn't want to lose. And they were losing that control to Jesus because people were coming to believe in Jesus. Remember, these are eyewitness accounts. These people saw Jesus perform these miracles. And when Jesus said, I have come from the Father, and he was testifying of himself, he gave them four witnesses to rely upon. He said, you have the witness of John the Baptist who came before him. You have the witness of the works that Jesus does. That's all the miracles. And as we read on, he, he turned water into wine. He raised people from the dead. He healed people of their sicknesses. He walked on water. He commanded weather. But the ultimate miracle that Jesus performed was that he, when he died on the cross, he rose again in three days. So you have the witness of John, the witness of his miraculous works, and then the witness of God, his Father, and the witness of Scripture. Remember in the Old Testament, there was prophecies like hundreds and hundreds of prophecies that tell us about where Jesus would be born how he would live where he would die how he'd be crucified Jesus fulfilled all those prophecies so Jesus is doing God is doing all that he can to show us that Jesus is the Messiah the Christ and whoever and it says whoever believes in him shall have life the point of Jesus coming into the world is that those who have faith and trust in Jesus, believe in him and put their trust in him, Jesus shall give you the gift of eternal life, the hope of the resurrection and the glory. That's chapter 5.